insight for today's matchup. I don't know which team Hello, the better and welcome back to I another Draft Player Now video. Well be the today, today, I'll be going well, over Shaq Lawson, say, defensive end, Clemson. Shaq Lawson, 6'3", 269 pounds. As I say before, defensive end from Clemson. He was... A All American in 2015 and also was an All ACC player. Clear staff. 123 tackles, 45 and a half tackles for a loss, 20 sacks, one forced fumble. The stat line may not seem very impressive, but. He was a part-time starter coming into 2015. He was part-time in uh, as a freshman and a sophomore in 2013 and 14 before stepping in, taking over, I believe, Vic Beasley's spot as the, uh, the starting defensive end and accumulating quite a solid season. Overall, I think Shaq Lawson is one of the best defensive ends in this draft the class. Offense, Probably one of the one of the best situation. players in this draft Lawson class, I believe. Him and Kevin Dodd, his teammate, are both very impressive players. I think they're both going to have solid, you know, careers coming out of this draft class. I think that Shaq Lawson may be more pro-ready of the two, but I think Kevin Dodd might have more potential. So that time he breaks the out route, the quarterback puts it right on target, and he makes the catch. This short of the first down mark, the Vikings snap it at the 40. So we will see. And it's incomplete, just can't hold on that time. Vikings know to win but the NFL, you got to Let's just jump into the pros and cons of Shaq Lawson. It doesn't matter how you do it. First, first short, they athletic. Fast, not executed very well. Now he is, down. he's quick, he's strong, he's an athlete. He's gonna make That's some. A touchback, and the ball will be spotted. He's gonna make some play. weird, you know, pass rushing plays that not a lot of people can do because of his surprising athleticism. I guess you could say. But I guess it's not really surprising when he's First technically considered to be undersized. So I think he's probably undersized for defensive end. I'd say the average defensive end is maybe 6'4", you know, 280-ish, 275. Average, I believe. So I think he's a little undersized. I don't think that really matters. I mean, there have been a lot of guys who consider undersized who have had incredible careers. Ray Lewis was considered undersized coming out of college. Yeah, that's him now. So I don't think his size really plays in too much to it. Next, the use of his speed and power. He uses them both very well to make, you know, offensive tackles. Well, the quarterback showed off just their, make their lives a living hell. He is a great combination of those two things. And he uses them very well the to his advantage in pass rushing and even run down, second down or run plays. Where he can either bull rush through a guy, he can use his speed to run past a guy. He, he's, it kind of goes back to his athleticism, but I felt like they were worth mentioning in different kind of sections here. Well, your teammates are really going to respect you after something like this. Anytime you're on that field Next, as an athlete. He's really good in run defense. I think he's one of the, like well, I guess it's not really one of the better when all I think of these defensive, I mean, these defensive ends are good run defenders. But he's a good run defender either way. So they know the pass probably has to go down the field on third and long, and they were ready for it. I don't think there's much else to say about that. He's a good run defender. He, that punch you know, he plays his position, position not only as a pure pass rusher, but he's willing to play to run, and he has, and he does it pretty well. So 
you're not going to get a guy who you have to bring off the field during Here's running downs because you know he's not going to play to run properly. Makes contact with the down player, and that's where the play comes to an end. Peterson's Next, high motor, doesn't really take many team, plays off. He, he, goes up he gives a great second down. effort when he's now rushing the passer. Three more he'll, you Adrian know, Peterson get knocked on his ass the by the offensive tackle. Peterson's he'll stand right back up to uh, make a decent play at the ball and even get the sack. So, again, high motor, he's not going to give up on many plays. And lastly, he has a lot of upside. Meaning he's a guy who's going to be good now and will also develop into a good player even further down the line in my mind. I think that he has almost everything that you want in a defensive end except for maybe size. But I don't think size is really a huge concern in the NFL. There's some guys who have been undersized who have had some of the best careers in the NFL. Drew Brees has been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL in the past, you know, six, seven years. And he's only six foot. Russell Wilson's had amazing success. He's 5'11", barely, I believe. I think he's more on the borderline of 5'10". So, I don't think size is a huge concern when it comes down to it. But, that being said, let's just get into the con. You got to get rid of the football. Nobody's open. First, just throw it away. That time, his agility coming around the edge. I said that his speed is good, but his footwork and his, you know, his footwork and his hand usage aren't the best coming around the edge. They can use improvement. You know, if he can run right past the guy, great, but he's not going to be able to use his hands and his footwork to the best of his possible ability. So that's something he has to work on day one. So that he's not trying to use his athletic ability too much as a crop. And a great example of that was Deion Gordon. A great, great athlete. He just didn't learn how to play in the NFL properly. So that's all I'll say about that. Next, he needs to get lower coming around the edge. You know, when he's uh when he's ripping around the corner on the tackles, he has to get lower, get better leverage to get under the offensive tackle. Because again, he's a bit of he has a lower center of gravity because he's a smaller guy. So he's obviously gonna have a bit more success if he gets lower because he'll have more force coming up. Well not really more force coming up, but he'll have more success coming up with it. Because most offensive tackles are maybe an inch or two bigger than him. So they kinda have to block down at him. So if he gets low enough, he can be a right huge issue for some of those line. bigger offensive tackles, in my mind. Lastly, I think it's something that he can fix this pretty much by the end the of the season. Of the first half. If he just the puts in time, his stamina. I think that sometimes he'll, although he has a really good motor, he may take some plays off or be off the field for a couple plays because he doesn't have the proper stamina. A great example of a guy I mean, who has great stamina, J.J. Watt. I'm pretty sure J.J. Watt almost never is off the field, it seems, on defense. I think once last year they made a huge deal about J.J. Watt uh, no, leaving the field because I guess he got hit in the groin with a dick. Let's just go with it. You know, it's football. He got hit in the fucking ball. So he left the, the field for about two plays, came back, and again played amazing. He's J.J. Watt. That's a guy who has amazing stamina and really almost never has to leave the field because he's so, you know, good. But, again, Shaq Lawson will just have to take a seat. Uh, maybe, like, his rookie season, work on his conditioning and be an overall more... Just a more athletic guy. He's already athletic, I guess, but he has to just be more... More conditioned. 
I'm having a hard time using my words we today. See it almost once a week and here it but again. overall, that's all my cons for him. I think he's a mostly upside player. I don't think there's many things that are mechanically wrong with him and the things that are can be fixed pretty easily. So, you'll see, I currently have him ranked as a first-round prospect. I have him rated as a early to mid-first-round pick. And just, I think that the reason I have him considered early is because of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who I think can definitely take him at nine if Buckner or Bosa aren't there. You can't give up plays so that they, that's the reason I really have him there. So my first team really on my teams of interest is Tampa Bay. Game. Tampa Bay really needs some pass rush help. And again, I think they'll probably, the I think in my mock draft, which I will side. do a video on probably the, the day before the draft, but in mine, I have Buckner falling to Tampa Bay. So I doubt it, but again, if Tampa Bay doesn't get Buckner or Bosa, Shaq Lawson is definitely a player of interest for them and probably going to be their pick. Next side is Chicago. Chicago just needs help on the defensive line in general. I think that their defense needs a lot of help in a lot of positions, except for maybe linebacker. I think their linebacking core is solid. And other than that, though, I think that's a team that can use some work on the defensive line and even in the secondary. Next, I have the two lanes team, the Miami Dolphins. The second half, you keep looking to pick up and first down. a lot of people may think that this is stupid. Seven, Cameron Wake and, you know, so Mario Williams, quarter, two guys who are pretty good. But you have to remember, they're both in their 30s. Cameron Wake will be turning 34 this coming season. Mario Williams will be turning 31. So they need to look to the future. And I think a guy like Shaq Lawson can be that future player. Especially because Oliver Vernon walked in free agency. He went down to, uh, he went up to New York, excuse me. So, they also need as much help on the pass rush they, they can get. I mean, there's guy, there's Tom Brady in this conference. Tyrod Taylor is emerging as one a good starting quarterback. And whoever starts for the Jets, whether if it's Fitzpatrick, he's in that division after a great season, or they may have to draft someone. But that's that's another conversation for another time. But yeah, the Jets quarterback. Jets need quarterback, and I hope it's Fitzpatrick. Don't take chances. I hope they can get it done. So he throws it short, and it gets a completion. Next, I have Detroit. I think that they can. If he's there, they can take a guy who who can line up from Ziggy Ansa, develop into a solid player after Ziggy Ansa, and they can have an incredible uh, one-two punch at the you know defensive end position. I personally think that they're probably more likely to go inside after losing the Dominican suit and Nick Fairley in the uh, free agency last year. But I'll get to that when I get to my inside nice players. Time. You run the football like this over but time, it's gonna wear next team I have is out. the Atlanta no Falcons. Nice he can join his uh, former Ryan teammate Ryan in Atlanta, join Vic Beasley, form a nice combination there. And the again, Atlanta needs pass rush. They need, they need a lot of so help on the defense the side of the ball. Let's and in my opinion, probably a little bit of help on the Hills. offensive line to keep Matt Ryan upright and give them their best the chance of winning. But I think that defense is a much bigger issue currently. Two minutes remaining, and you're watching the NFL on EA and Sports. I think the absolute last team that you know he'll go to. I think if he falls past this pick, Second I'd be very goal. surprised. I believe it's Buffalo is the absolute off. minimum for him. If he falls past Buffalo, I'd be very surprised. But again, Buffalo just lost Mario Williams. Can use a young presence on that defensive line. 
to get some more depth, get a guy who can develop into a good starter by the second or third season, and he'll be a solid player in the net. But before, I guess you already know who I have him going to. Before I get to that, let's talk about Shaq Lawson. I think overall, he's a mostly upside prospect with not, too, not a lot of off the field concern. I'm pretty sure he had a lot. He was very, you know, he was benign, I guess I should say, at, uh, at Clemson. Not a lot of big issues with him. I never heard anything bad about him, you know, as a off the field issue. So. You're getting a guy who's gonna be, who's gonna be a player who's gonna try and you know, he's obviously gonna stay clean off the field. Hopefully, you know, again, not that we, not that anyone knows of, but it seems like he stayed clean off the field at Clemson. I didn't really notice anything bad about him off the field. So it's just all about. It's all about, you know, his talent and if he can develop properly in the NFL. But I believe Zach Lawson is definitely worth a high draft pick. So I believe that with the 13th overall pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins will select Zach Lawson, defensive end, Clemson. My reasoning. I believe that Mario Williams and uh, Cameron Wake will be good for about two seasons. But then they're going to have to find someone to replace one of those two guys as Cameron Wake cannot continue to play at the level he does. Even though he is very good right now, he's turning 34 in a season or two. You know, he'll be at that age where a lot of players start to contemplate being done forever. So... I think that they should probably look to the future now. Zach Lawson can be that guy, and he can learn from two of the best pass rushers in the NFL today. Although they're older guys, they're still two of the better guys. Draft him, let him learn behind him, and you have a great rotation. You know, you have a great pass rush rotation against Tom Brady, against potentially Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tyrod Taylor, who I believe is probably an emerging star in the AFC East. He's averaging about four yards As the Bills are probably going to continue to improve, hopefully, season by season here, and eventually start to compete for the AFC East title. But that's my thoughts on Shaq Lawson. Coming up next will be Kevin Dodd, his teammate from Clemson. So we will see. To catch the defense off guard when you're winning and it's late in the but game. Uh, gonna, so they played it very predictable there. The defense really was ready. Nowhere to team go. Team off. That beautifully executed punt now really will help out this defense. But forcing the next two players to start the are Kevin Dodd and Noah ten. Spence, and that's the end of my defensive down, end. Defensive end. Then I'll be hopping now. right into defensive tackles. And I will be doing linebackers and defensive backs as Looking a whole. Ball. So we'll go linebackers and then defensive backs or linebackers. And I'm not going to separate outside well, and the interior. There's really only one no inside linebacker that's the really worth the football falls incomplete. Hey, taking that, like, the with line, a first round pick. The left. I think and the rest the of those guys are outside. So I'm just going to combine them. So that's that. Be on the lookout for Kevin Dodd, hopefully tomorrow. And for now, this is Jay Wax signing off.